Good morning. It's the first day show. Terry Stacy, Danny Smith, Kylan Talley, Greg Cooper, and Lisa Phillips, real estate consultants, bring you this first day show every Sunday. They're with Crossroads Collective at Compass Real Estate, CrossroadsCollectiveHomes.com, or or Hoosier Home Values 2023.com. Denny? I've done that, and I've got a quick response. I'm looking forward to finishing that process, so that's a great website for you. Let's go right to Greg first. Hey, Greg, what's the status of home inspections today in a home purchase? Well, it's changed. And each of the last years, Denny, it's changed. And right now, home inspections generally are taking place. That's a good thing for both buyers and sellers. And it's very individualized as to how it's structured based on the price of the home, geography of the home, and the status of the buyer. So they are happening as opposed to a year ago when many of them were not. And so, Lisa, what's the general inspection process look like for home buyers today? For home buyers, it's actually, there's two kind of processes. I mean, you still are going to get a home inspection. You're going to still have that opportunity more than likely. If you're in a competitive offer situation, though, you're going to be looking at only addressing major items or maybe not at, no items at all. You're just taking it as um, just to know for knowledge base. And then there's the other side of that actually you're going to have a full on home inspection for a buyer and that they can negotiate a laundry list of items. Greg, everybody says that the sellers have all the leverage right now, but I'm not sure that that's true because there's a shortage of inventory. What's your perspective of of how much leverage a seller has right now with the home inspection process? Well, sellers do have leverage, Denny, but here's the thing to keep in mind. Number one, there are sellers who think, well, if uh, my home is in a very competitive situation, I don't even have to allow the buyer to do that. That's a bad thing, home yes, sellers. Sir. You want them to do an inspection. You want the liability, A, released by allowing a buyer to do their diligence. That's the first part of this. And remember, home sellers, just because a buyer does an inspection, it doesn't mean you have to do any specific thing. They may make a request, and you can go back at them and say, I'm not going to do that. So it really, it's it's in your best interest. And sellers don't think this way. They think, oh, I don't have to have an inspection. This is great. No. You don't want the liability. Let the buyer do their diligence and work it out. It is in everyone's best interest. That's Greg Cooper along with Lisa Phillips. And Lisa, what can home buyers do to protect themselves in the inspection process and still give sellers some assurance that they want the process to move ahead? I think in our offer that we provide, a lot of times we are doing a, yes, we're going to get a home inspection, but we're going to limit it to, let's say, $2,500 worth of one item repair or just major mechanicals, which would, in the roof, no one wants to take on a new roof, new HVAC. And and again, sellers need to know because they're putting on disclosures that these items work. And so that is an that can come up later if, for example, the sellers are misleading or they might just not know, which is why we always recommend for the sellers, yes, you want the buyers to have an inspection. Greg, I'm sort of getting conflicting ideas here. Is it a, If it's a good thing for sellers to want one, what happens if the buyer says, nah, we don't need an inspection altogether? What do you, what do you advise your sellers in that situation? Well, there's documents, Denny, that we can insert into the sale that say, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer or Mr. Buyer or Mrs. Buyer, you can have, you've had the opportunity to have an inspection, and you have absolutely of your own free will chosen not to. You want that very clearly understood by all parties. So there's documentation, documentation that can support that. You know, some buyers are very, very savvy. They might be buying a home and have a great deal of mechanical or structural acumen. That's okay, too. But we want to make sure that it's super clear after the fact that when this transaction ends, everybody has had the opportunity to do their diligence, and the buyer, if they go ahead and close on the property, is accepting the home as it is. And then, Lisa, can buyers build a stopgap amount of money for an inspection that would cover only major or certain items? Yes. And then I think also what we need to prepare our home buyers for is actually the financial cost of some of these inspections. So we're budgeting about $500, but then there is like a sewer scope that might be another couple hundred, a radon test for a couple hundred. So that's also another thing in there for our home buyers to consider. Hey, Greg, for us anal retentive type sellers, should we no. have the should we have the home pre-inspected <laughs> to make sure that the selling process, I mean, should I have it done before the buyer's inspector comes in? So that's a very altruistic thing, Danny. You'd think, gosh, if I'm a home seller and I want to get my home inspected, I want to make sure it's right for everybody, you'd think that that's a good thing. But here's the, the reality of home inspections. They're a lot like haircuts. No two are the same. So <laughs> it, 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 
if you have an inspection yourself, which again is a very formidable thing to do, you know what the situation is with your home. But the next home buyer might look at the next home buyer's inspector might look at the home differently. Honestly, and if you have some things that you know you have to deal with, deal with them before the inspection. I'm just not a huge fan of the pre-inspection because it's not a guarantee that that's all you're going to have in the end of things as the transaction would move forward with an actual buyer. All right, we're going to have to move along here in just a second. But Greg, I want to jump to any. Are there any other key issues for sellers heading into home sales that might make that process a little easier? Disclose, disclose, disclose. You might not think that you have to tell somebody that you had the termite work done eight months ago. I'm telling you, it's in your best interest to put it on the seller's disclosure. Everybody knows what's going on. And frankly, when buyers see that you're willing to be forthright, there's a greater level of trust that goes into the transaction. Disclose, disclose, disclose. That's always the most important part of any real estate transaction as it begins. All right, Lisa. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. For buyers, what should they be looking for in a home inspector? Well, they, their um, home inspectors are licensed by the state, so that's one thing. They can kind of look online, make sure that there's nothing been filed with the attorney general, and also just talk to a real estate professional. We have obviously vastly different experiences in, um, with the good ones and maybe the questionable ones. All right. We'll let you guys get back at it. What, uh, where, where can we find you? Greg, we'll start with you. How can listeners find and get a hold of you if they've got some questions and need some help? Certainly. They can find both Lisa and I at CrossroadsCollectiveHomes.com. You can also find out what your house is worth right now if you're interested at Who's Your Home Values, 2023.com. That's, That's it. And Lisa, for you, how do we get a find, How do we find you? I guess both that way. And then my um, contact me via text. Call me, 317-219-9277. Thank you. Thank you both. We appreciate Thanks. you. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Thanks, you all. Too. You bet. You're listening to The First Day 93 WIBC.